Now that uh, Republicans like Paul Gosar, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Wendy Rogers showed up and gave support at the White Nationalist Conference over the weekend, many Republican leaders are gonna have to answer or maybe not answer for what it is their party has gone to and why it has gotten there. Um, I'm not sure if they're gonna continue to gaslight folks or if they're gonna actually point out, hey, this is not where things are supposed to be. Maybe a glimpse into this into this could have been from uh, the head of the RNC, Ronna McDaniel, when she was asked about this while she was running around in uh, the general area at CPAC. Let's watch. Large Congresswoman Taylor Greene spoke at a white nationalist conference. I am not familiar with it, so I'm not gonna well, give a comment. She spoke at- oh, oh, how are you? Chairwoman, can we tell you what we're gonna get her She spoke, she literally spoke at Nick Fuentes' I, I just left, so I have no idea. Can we tell you what she said? She she has no idea. I mean, it's a, it's a standard answer you can run away with. I haven't heard about it. Don't know what that is. I don't know what she said, so I can't comment on it. Well, maybe she can comment on some of the things that another elected official, uh, state senator from Arizona, as we pointed out earlier, Wendy Rogers, what she had to say at CPAC. A little bit more from her. Watch. When we do take back our God given rights, we will bring these criminals to justice. I've said we need to build more gallons. If we try some of these high level criminals, convict them, and use a newly built set of gallons, it'll make an example of these players who betrayed them. They have yet to be justly punished for the crimes they've committed. Nick and the other patriots in attendance at AFPAC, please keep doing what you are doing. I admire you, and I so appreciate how you never give up. We need more strong Americans like you who never back down. We must always put our shoulder to the wheel to move the Overton window toward Christ, America first. So there's uh, Wendy Rogers not actually attending CPAC because you know she just needs to lend her voice, but not her presence because she knows what that is. She absolutely knows what it is. So as she talks about gallows and hey, Nick Fuentes and the rest of you, do what you keep doing. So there's there's gonna be no room for her to back out of this like Marjorie Taylor Greene. I've never heard of Nick Fuentes. I can't say to continue to do what he's doing because I don't know what he's doing. Apparently, Wendy does know. Uh, now, as far as when it comes to her state, this is the governor of her state, Doug Ducey. He's a Republican as well. So naturally, as I said, party leaders are gonna have to start answering for this. Doug Ducey was now asked about the state senator from his state, Wendy Rogers, and her presence at that event. He's a little bit more direct than Ronna McDaniel was. Let's watch what his response was as he smirked at the question. Since taking office, she's become extremely controversial and kind of openly associated with basically white nationalist movements that are trying to move the Republican Party and the conservative movement in that direction. Given all this, are you still happy with that investment? Do you believe that was a good decision? What I need is, as a governor are governing majorities so that I can pass dollars into our social safety net. So that's what I've wanted to do is move my agenda forward. I'm proud of what we've been able to accomplish. and. She's still better than her opponent, Felicia French. So what do you think of, of that kind of wing of the conservative movement that she represents? Well, I said she's better than Felicia French. That's his definitive answer. She's better than Felicia French after, after being asked a couple times about her white nationalist connections. She's better than French. So her white nationalism is better than anyone else. So he agrees with it. Openly agrees with. And by the way, in case you guys uh, uh, want to just go, let's go for policy. You libs like policy. He mentioned how he he needs people like her to pass social safety net programs. Let's look at one of those. It was SB 1222. Um, and let's look at some of the details from that because it was co authored by a Democratic uh, uh, representative there as well. So a Democratic proposal to create a new tax credit for working low income Arizonans that Republican Governor Doug Ducey adopted as part of his budget proposal was approved by the Arizona State. Uh, Senate Wednesday. That's wonderful. Wow, Doug, you're doing good things for the people. The idea is to promote extra cash to working families who could use the money for food, utilities, gas, and other necessities. And Democratic Sean uh, Senator Sean Bowie said that the money would flow right back into the economy. Wonderful. Ducey's on board, and he needs people 
like Wendy Rogers to get these things done. Let's see how she voted on this very important legislation that the governor didn't take in. Let's look at this chart really fast because it was passed 21 were in favor of it, seven were against and two others were not voted. One of those seven, if you can look down on the chart, Rogers has a big fat N next to her name that denotes no. So as Doug Ducey is in support of people like Wendy Rogers going to white nationalist events and talking about how Nick Fuentes needs to continue to do what he's doing. But he needs her there to help with social safety net passing legislation like this. I think she's not really backing you on that. And what you actually have is a white nationalist that you're in support of. I'm sorry, yes, I've already filibustered this enough. <laughs> I Yeah, that's a lot. I don't know how you can call to hang people on gallows and then say, you know, invoke the name of Christ in the same breath. And then America first, I don't know what Christ has to do with America first. It's two separate things altogether. And I think the conflation of those two things is just speaks to how disjointed the Republican Party has become. Even if you wanted to be, you know, family values, Christ-like values, whatever. And then you just talk about the gallows and America first. It's just completely incongruent ideas. And they don't really understand that or they do and their constituents don't, their public doesn't. The people who are attending white nationalist conventions don't understand that. And it's I I don't know if it comes from a place of self-righteousness or just fear or just um, fear of losing their prominence and perceived superiority in the world. And also you talk about, I think it was Fuentes was talking about how America was built on white people. <laughs> we all know that's not true, JR, we know that's not true. It's that's the, all I'll say about that. As, as it usually is, if you say it enough many times and their supporters will believe it. Yeah, and honestly, yeah, what they're do. following is this ghost of Donald Trump who's cultivated this rabid part of the party, which was always there. It's just they've gotten louder. And now that they're there, Donald Trump is all over it. And they have to follow him to the ends of the earth to continue to keep that voting block. Because that's the only way they can keep power. And let's keep is it that even like a popular stance anymore, though. Are people still winning elections by, by taking up that stance? Because we have another stance. Because we have a guy in Texas who has a very similar platform again. So it seems like it. I hope it's not going to take on a whole lot more traction than it already has. I the feel like it will start. Uh, traction? The, like the Trump platform and all these things that they're saying, the pro-Putinism, that kind of stuff. Uh, there's Yeah, just because I saw another candidate come out in Texas the other day on the same Trump-esque platform. And I was like, does that still work for them? I don't know. I guess to a degree, because I mean, you tell me you're down yeah. in Texas. <laughs> I don't know what goes on in Texas. 